Hello and welcome to another tutorial video from RC Empire. As always, if you like this and our other videos, please rate, comment and subscribe. Now let's get down to business. In this quick video, we will be showing you how to change the engine mounts on a HPI Trophy Buggy 3.5 from start to finish. As you can see, I have been running this car with only three screws with no issues on some pretty brutal rocky terrain whilst on holiday because one of the threads had stripped. Luckily, these mounts were really cheap and about five pound a pair. So, the first thing you wanna do is loosen the mounts from the chassis. You can take the exhaust off first, but I did this after because the engine is a bit more maneuverable. You will also need to take off the throttle linkage from the carb because you will be removing the whole engine. And slowly pull off the exhaust. Now, one thing with this engine is you cannot take the mounts off without removing the cooling head. This is a bit of a pain. Maybe if you had a thinner hex keys you can do it, but I couldn't quite get in there. Remove the head via the four screws and this will give you full access to the screws holding the engine to the mount, of which there are two on each side. Make sure at this point you don't get any dust or dirt in the engine and it's probably a good idea to block up the hole for the air filter. There you can see the old mount with one of the holes being stripped. and some of the old screws. I actually think one of the screws was stripped too, but actually I didn't notice this whilst running the car. The mesh stayed perfect whilst running. Put those aside and make sure you do not mix them up with the new hardware. This is the new mount set, kit 101101 from HPI. The great thing with this new mount set is that it comes with everything you need to install the new mount, including screws, washers, this means that you do not need to recycle the old ones and risk refitting a damaged screw. So personally, I would get rid of all of the old ones or keep them somewhere separate and use them in emergency or for spares. So as mentioned, the kit comes with eight screws, four for the mount to chassis and four for the engine to mount. It also comes with two engine mounts and four washers. So straight away I noticed, as I thought with this second hand buy, that the screws used to hold the engine mount on were wrong. I mean, the thread looks like it could be the same, but it's a shorter flathead screw compared to the longer domed ones that came with the new kit. What I like to do before I fit the mounts is to dab a little bit of thread lock onto each screw. Just a little dab. Don't put loads on because when it comes to taking it off, there will be damaged tools, damaged screw heads and a lot of swearing. To get the screws into the holes easily without fiddling around too much, I place the mount and engine on a flat table, line up the holes, drop the screw in and tighten them up, making sure you don't thread them again. You can then tighten the screws up on one side so the mount is secure and again do the exact same on the other side. Then go around all four screws and make sure they are nice and tight.
Once this is done, take the calling head, fit it back into place and tighten all four screws. I like to tighten them in an opposite pattern to get an even pressure either side of the cylinder and you know it's seated properly. Get the old hardware out of the way because you won't be needing that. With that done, you can move on to fitting the motor back onto the car. At this stage, before tightening all four screws, you will want to properly mesh the pinion and the spur gear. You will want to refit the exhaust over the gasket at this point as well because it's easier to do now. Again, I also like to put a little dab of thread lock on the screws and once you are happy with the meshing, you can go ahead and tighten everything up. A bit tighter than what I did there, but I still need to mesh the gears. And all that's left to do after that is to replace all the linkages. Place the spring for the exhaust, make sure you have a good set of pliers for this because it helps when you can really grip the wire properly. And replace the air filter and you're done. So again, if that was helpful, please subscribe to my channel and comment and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. That's it, hope you enjoyed, thank you for watching and see you soon.